We have some election results. Republican Mara Flores has won in a special election in a Texas district defeating her Democratic opponent. Now, the interesting thing here is this is a district that was blue, that Joe Biden won uh, by a number of points, and that is a, a massive majority Hispanic district. Uh, Flores is uh, uh, actually born in Mexico, I think the first uh, Mexican-born uh, uh, congresswoman. And this, and this, now this district has been redrawn, so she's actually going to have to, it's a kind of weird circumstance, she's going to have to run for re-election again, and I think under the new district it's more favorable even so mm. to Democrats, so we'll see. But as a kind of indicator of where things are right now, you know, easily, she's triumphing easily in a... In 13 a, points, I think. Yeah, that went, that went to Biden, um, and, you know, showing the problems that Democrats are going to have and are having with Hispanic voters in particular. Yeah, I mean, both candidates I believe in this race were Hispanic, but this really, you know, throws a monkey wrench in the Democratic notion that magically ha being running Hispanic people or is going to get you to win in Hispanic districts or that Hispanic people are naturally always going to align with the Democratic Party. This was the really under sold story, I'm sorry, of the 2020 Democratic primary, but Bernie Sanders' ability to do well with Hispanic voters because certain issues like health care and a minimum wage are such huge drivers. When he won Nevada, in part because the culinary union rank and file flipped, disregarded leadership and said, no, we want to go with Bernie Sanders instead of mm. being, you know, going with a kind of a corporate elite, Democrat elite led leadership. It was a huge sea change and really reflected the fact that if you deliver and you give, a, you know, provide a, a populist working class platform to people, it doesn't matter. Democrat, Republican, Latino voters are much more in flux. And I'm not, I haven't been following this race closely, but I'd be really curious to see what kind of messaging was going on down there in Texas and whether or not the Democratic candidate was running on being a Democrat or whether or not he was running on some of these substantive policies that working people really need. Well, so Flores did uh, tout that her husband was a Border Patrol agent. So, you know, no illusions there about she's a Republican and what she thinks about immigration. Democrats have pretended that just kind of scaring Hispanic voters, just saying, well, Republicans are racist and they hate immigrants. That's doing the work. That's enough. Yeah. And it's just, it could not be clearer that that is yeah. that that is not working. Actually, even some some Hispanic uh, voters uh, uh, want stronger immigration policies. For sure. or they, I mean, they have a range of opinions on the issues. Right. They might want stronger ones than I do. I do. I'm, right. I'm for immigration, but it's not. It's just not this monolith. It's not the only issue to them. It's not necessarily right. the most important issue, and it's not an issue necessarily where they all agree. So it just. It's just a losing strategy to just focus on that and say, "Oh, that'll be good enough." Yeah. Well, like a lot of stories these days, this one has an Elon Musk tie-in. Mm -hmm. What is that, Robbie? So Elon Musk voted in this election. He lives in this district, and he said that he voted for Flores, the Republican for the first time in his life ever voting for a Republican. Uh, he, he also said on Twitter that he was asked if he'd be voting for a Republican in 2024. He uh, you know, cryptically said TBD, and then he was asked who he liked, and he said DeSantis. Yeah. So um, Is this, this is the beginning of the coveted Elon Musk bump? Is he controlling the airwaves through Twitter and also our political futures? <laughs> I mean, he's just such a... He's, He's the main character that, like, Republican <laughs> or conservative news consumers need now that Trump is kind of exiting the stage as the guy. He's now he's the it's, it's his turn in the spotlight, and he's being he is both be, becoming associated with conservative uh, uh, the conservative tribe, and and also I think deliberately catering it to a, to a great extent. What do you think that's about? What's the chicken and the egg of that here? Do you think, because I've observed this phenomenon, mm -hmm. I've observed it in my personal life, that if you say anything that is at all validating to a conservative worldview, you know, let's they say you and they, they embrace you, they pull you in. And we saw this with Joe Rogan. Rogan. Absolutely. You know, Joe Rogan endorsed Bernie Sanders and Lib said, oh, I hate you. You're a right winger. Right. Joe, you know. But the conservatives, he says anything that's at all, whether it's the anti-vax stuff or whatever, that's even remotely aligned with the majority view on the right, and they embrace him and bring him in, and he goes further and further in that direction. Is that what's happened with yep. Elon Musk, or yep. do you think he has real ideological commitments here? I think it is frustratingly and increasingly hard to be not wholly part of one tribe or the other now. We're all kind of pretty accurately sorted. The era of, 
you know, the conservative Dem who votes for Republicans, some t maybe a Republican president, but mostly votes for Democrats locally, or the opposite, a Republican, but darn it, John Kennedy is handsome on TV, so I'm voting for him. Like, that's over. That doesn't happen. Yeah. You just vote for you vote for your person. It, it's hard to be someone. And I, I, I speak with, you know, some experience as someone with libertarian views that sometimes uh, fit into what liberals think and sometimes fit into what conservatives think. The overriding temptation is just to fully commit to one side or the other and reap the rewards of being part of a team and a yeah. tribe and having uh, having one media environment play defense for you. And, I, you know, he's a... Musk is a very important and wealthy and influential person, and the value of wholly committing to one side or the other is then you do have people coming to your defense. Yeah. Uh, right, right now, the entire conservative media establishment wants to defend and protect uh, Elon Musk, and a lot, you know, a lot of other business figures go the other way. They find the Republican, they don't like the Republican Party, or they don't like some of its values, so they have to be part of the other side. And then you get more committed to, you yeah. know, whatever the, the Democrats are good and Trump is evil and, and that kind of thing. What do you think this means for third party efforts like Andrew Yang's Forward Party? Is there an appetite for that right now? It's certainly, there's an appetite for it. I absolutely think if you just talk to people, the appetite for third parties is is huge. But the structural problems for third parties just cannot be overcome. I wish they could be overcome. I we we, we need ranked choice voting. We yeah. need proportional uh, kind of electoral and other uh, kinds of things. But but that would involve, you know, the two parties who control our government w would have to concede to structural changes that will that will weaken their death grip. Yeah, there, there was a time when Andrew, Andrew Yang used to tweet and get the kind of enthusiasm, not in the same scale, but that Elon Musk gets. Mm -hmm. There was a similar vibe there. I am a tech guy, a, a kind of finance guy who can speak truth to power, who's outside of the system, who, you know, is surprising in their takes and an and, and innovator, and people really had an appetite for it. I watch his tweets these days and the level of engagement they get and when he talks about the forward party, and I know that Twitter is not a real barometer of the, of the real world, but at least in this space, it feels like something has shifted. And the generalized talk about like, we, we gotta be together and I'm over divisiveness and we have to have proactive solutions, that rhetoric that, that landed for folks in the primary context, in the democratic mm -hmm. primary co context, doesn't seem to be toothy enough for the kind of battles that are happening now on Twitter, but maybe I mean, wrong. We have to, Yang did do a very impressive job of being someone who no one knew who he was, yeah. talking about a, a lot of very specific issues, just, you know, appeared. Put UBI on the map. Really did. Uh, it really contributed uh, to the conversation. It's, you know, it's one thing for a someone who's politically unknown but is generally well-known, like a celebrity mm -hmm. or, or like Bloomberg coming in or even mm -hmm. Trump, right, and, and, and making some kind of impression because they have this basic recognition, and Yang didn't have that at all. No, and he still beat Kamala yeah. in uh, California. <laughs> right. <laughs> or would have. So, but, but you know, look, people, that, that moment might just have passed, and now, you know, we need to, you know, the public's just interest in, in certain people wanes, and maybe it needs to be somebody else. But, but in any case, the structural issues are just so hard. This is what I talk to people about when I, I I'm a third party voter. I, I wish third parties would, uh, would, would do better, uh, but it's, it's, it's just because it, it's really an, a uniquely American problem because of the structure just does not allow it to happen. And I wish, I wish it was different. I, I think other countries, a lot of European countries that seem to have somewhat healthier political uh, uh, situations or yeah. political conversations, have many parties, have yeah. not just two, but many parties. And then when one party goes insane, the rest gang up on them. And you have these kind of coalitions that are uh, that, that seem healthier. Uh, yeah, well, I talk about this a lot with people who listen to my show and my call-in show. There's a lot of frustration on the left with electoralism, generally speaking. Yeah. And sometimes I do candidate interviews and most folks are over it because they don't see any hope of populist, progressive populism getting any breathing room within the Democratic Party. They see Democrats turning on progressives harder than they will turn against Republicans or the you know so-called moderates like uh, Kristen Sinema and, and Joe Manchin, and they don't want to see leftists running within the Democratic Party. Now, they do sometimes say, I would love a candidate, and this was a discussion around Bernie 2020, 
I would love a candidate to run within the Democratic Party, take advantage of the system and avoid some of those structural barriers and then do a dirty break once they're elected. Mm -hmm. um, people, a lot of people wanted Bernie Sanders to run third party at the end of the Democratic primary. I don't think that was ever in his like DNA. But there are a candidate I endorsed, uh, I, sorry, I uh, interviewed recently, Michaela Wilkes, said that she was open to that. She's running against Denny Hoyer and Maryland's fifth. And my audience was very receptive to that idea. So I'd be curious to see whether there are more candidates that might say, I'm going to run as a Democrat, I'm going to run as a Republican, and then I'm going to break for the forward party if the party does me wrong, if the party, the two-party infrastructure does well, me and, wrong. And it needs to start at the local level, the smaller level. Like you can't, you're not going to suddenly have a, a third party presidential candidate, you know, do anything remotely impressive, but you could you know, I, Elon Musk could run, could run in that district as a Don't forward party him. candidate, I'm just saying, <laughs> and he would he might very well win, and then you have to build something yeah. from that, but uh, yeah. in the, the, in the uh, you know, general presidential, no luck there. Yeah, if Elon can change our election law, he'll get some That'd kind words. That'd be great, they are me. bad. <laughs> well, we'll have more rising right after this.